how do you build a 40 meter dipole for POTA that's going to cost you essentially nothing. So that's what we're going to do today. The first thing is, let's say we got five bucks, got five dollars, and that's all you've got to build your antenna. So what do you need? The first thing you're going to need is wire which will form the dipole and you need coax to feed it and that's really all um, having a balin is nice having all those things but it's not necessary so you want to build something with scrap you've got in your shed then we can do it this way so how do you know how long the wire must be uh, the signal moves at the speed of light which is three times 10 to the power of 8 which is equal to 300 million and then of course we've got our frequency which is 7 megahertz and megahertz is million hertz so if we divide that we end up with 300 divided by 7 so to do it accurately. Also, the speed of light is not 300, it's 299 point something. So we work on 300 as a round figure. You'll see we adjust for that later. So 300 divided by 7 is going to give us 42.85. In this case, that was just rounded off. We want to work on the POTA frequency, which is 7.0, call it 7.09 megahertz. So if we do the same exercise, we say 300 divided by 7.09, we get 42.31 meters. That is for a full wavelength. We only want quarter of a wavelength. So what we want to do is have a feed line, which in our case is going to be coax, and then we've got a quarter wave on either side. So we've just said that the length of a full wave is 42.31. So if we say 40. 2.31 meters divided by 4 and that's going to give us a length for each of the elements of 10.5 call it 8 meters but I sound like these people doing the sales talks on the morning shows but there's more so we've said it's 10.58 meters. That's theoretically a quarter wave. So that's equal to a quarter wave of uh, 40 meters or 7.09 megahertz. There are a number of things that affect this. Um, number one, your the way we're going to mount it, I'm going to use a terminal block, so you'll see what we do. But if we use a terminal block, um, you've got a dielectric, um, and there's a proximity of the conductors, so that will affect it. There's an end effect and feed point loading, loading, which is capacitive and inductive. If you were to build a quarter wave dipole with a balin, then it would be 10.58. And then there's what they call a velocity factor, which is normally about uh, common line five. That also depends on the thickness of the wire. So that's common line five which equals 10.05 meters. So with a balin With a balin, 
it's going to be about 10.05 meters. In our case, we're not using a balin, and basically we're going to take a normal electrical terminal block, which you've all seen many times, and it's got the little screws on it, so you can tighten the wires. We're just going to use a terminal block. So we're going to take the coax. The coax comes up like that. You've got the braiding on the outside. And we're going to take the braiding and put it in one side. And we're going to take the center of the coax and put it in the other side. So then we're going to take the wire. And we're going to take one wire there, one wire there. Because these are so close, number one, there's capacitance. Number two, the wire we're going to use is very, very thin old speaker wire that I had in the shed. Um, if it's thin, it affects it. So we're going to start ideally with 10.05, but in this case, you'll see it actually ends up a little bit shorter. What happens if you don't have a balin is the braiding on the coax, so only the braiding on the outside, becomes part of the antenna. So that definitely is going to affect it. So the braiding is part of the antenna, and here the center is part of the antenna. So the length of your coax is also going to have an effect. The other thing that's going to have an effect is how hard is above the ground. So there's the ground. And you've got your pole, and you've got your dipole, that height, so that height makes a difference, and the height of the ends of the dipoles makes a difference. So in my case, we're going to use a pole which is just over 4 meters, and the ends are about a meter off the ground, because that's typically what would happen if you're setting up a POTA event and you're going to have a pole. You could have a longer pole, but let's just say. So that's the perfect length with the balin. You're going to see we end up with slightly less than that. But that is because, as I say, you've got the dielectric, you've got the capacitance, you've got the end effect and the feed point loading. You've got the feed line interaction going through the terminal block and the thickness of the wire. So that's where we start and I'm going to go into my workshop and we're going to build one quickly. The entire antenna will cost $5 or less. Um, generally it should cost you nothing because you've got junk lying around in your shed which you can use for this. The speaker wire I'm using I used in my old house to a burglar alarm siren. So it's very thin wire. Um, it's too short, I'm going to join it. And basically what I'm trying to prove is that you can get on the air for less than five bucks. Not the perfect situation. I really like having a balin in you. But that's what we're going to do and I'm going to show you the results. So off we go to the shed. So this is my workshop. I actually make a lot of antennas in here. So the wire we're going to use is just this two core ripcord. We call it ripcord, I think here it's known as speaker wire, it's all the same thing. And you saw on that last, on the, on the calculations, that we need 10.04 meters. So before I do that, I'm gonna just hang that up here. Uh, I've got some coax, it's got a connector on. So that will go into the meter or your radio. So this end, I'm just going to clear a little bit. So here I've just got a normal terminal block. If you're planning on leaving this outside, then you're going to have to seal around the coax because if you get water into the coax, that's going to mess up your SWR. So you can see here, you've just got the end. So what I normally do, Get some more tools. So I take the end of the coax, stick a screwdriver through the braid, and 
open it up. I then put a screwdriver behind the center core and I'll pull it through the braid. So you end up with it like that. Then just twist it so it doesn't become too much of a mess. And then I'm going to clean the end of this piece because that's also going to go into the terminal block. Okay, that's tight. And now the dipole is going to go out of either end. They're exactly the same length. So it's really not an issue. So the coax is already finished. Now we need the wire. So I will first cut it and then split it. This is very thin wire. And I'm just going to use this. So I need 10.04 meters. I'm going to make it 10.1 meters, maybe 10.2, and then I never cut it until I'm 100% happy. I twist it back on itself. So that's what I'm going to do. And to be even cheaper, uh, the one length is five and a half and the one length is six. So that's 11 and a half. I only need 10, but I need it continuous. So I'm just going to join it and solder it. This is just for an experiment anyway. So I pulled the tape measure out earlier. Here's a 30 meter tape. I hold the wire at the end and I need 10 point, I'm going to go to 10.2 just to be safe, there's 10 meters, and I'm going to go to 10.2, and there's only about a meter left, but I'm going to cut it off. So there we go, we've got 10.2 meters, and we're going to do that, that, that. There we go. Now, what I want to show you is, if you have a multimeter at home, a multimeter is really handy. That's a multimeter. Not a SWR meter, a multimeter. I always check for continuity. Because if you make a cock up, or there's a dry joint on something, you can identify it almost immediately with a multimeter. Setting the SWR is a different story, but the multimeter can show you that at least there's continuity and it's connected properly. So we are now running at about 15 minutes from when I started. And then you'll see, I'm going to take a tape measure with me and I measure the ends. So when I adjust it, I measure both ends exactly the same because otherwise your SWR, although it might be lower, it will not go very low because if one arm or one side of the dipole is longer than the other, the SWR will could be 1.5, 1.7. So it's essential that both lengths are exactly the same. Okay. First thing we're going to do now is pull the terminal block to the top of the pole. Then we're going to tie off the ends and check the SWR. Terminal block is tied at the top. The wires on either side. I'm just going to go and tie it. But this whole antenna is going to weigh probably about 150 grams. Uh, including the co well with the coax maybe 300 grams but very little. On um, the ends I always twist back on themselves. If you cut it, once you've cut it, it's too late. So I normally do this. I measured that as 15 centimeters. And then I twist it like this. Instead of using, instead of cutting it, I twist it back. So it is now about 35 minutes so I've now brought 
the MFJ. I much prefer this. Okay, the resin and frequency. And if you can see that is 6.875. So I'm gonna shorten the dipole a little bit. But the SWR is one to one. So we will just do that quickly and then try again. I have done my adjustments backwards forwards a few times and using speaker wire with a terminal block my SWR is one to one and from 7.01 that's a 1.5 and all the way to 7.2 here we go, 7.26, it's 1.5. So the entire band, and if I go to the potter frequencies, one to one on, on 7.09. The camera I'm using for this is not meant for close up, so I hope it's okay. But 7.09, 7.05, the whole band, and if you look at the SWR, there we go. So it has now taken me a total of an hour, but I was fiddling a bit with the SWR and I think I adjusted it five times, but it's now set. The total materials excluding the coax, but it's an off cut, it's three meters, four meters long, it's a piece I had. It cost me nothing. If I had to buy everything, five dollars, I'm sure you could scrounge stuff from your neighbor, or you'll find stuff, or when your wife's not looking, cut the cord off the, the lamp in the lounge and use that wire. But uh, there's lots of options. And this is really, it works, and it's, it's cheap. So I just thought what sh I'll show you what you can make in a very, very short time. Really easy. You need an SWR meter, but the rest is easy. You probably don't even need a terminal block. Um, what I did, I made the, the wire a little bit longer. That's why I adjusted it so much. So I started at uh, just over 10 meters and I worked it down but also you're going to have some capacitance issues. Probably that's why I had to adjust it a bit more than usual. This is what I did. It's just got string. I twist it over itself. Once I'm happy with the SWR, I could cut the extra off. But the SWR will change depending on circumstances and where you are and I always leave it, leave a bit of extra wire and cut back as I need to. We know it works. SWR one to one for basically for free. But let's call it five dollars as a round figure. So I hope that's helped you. As usual, if you have any questions, uh, ask or email me and I'm more than happy to help. So I hope that's uh, given you something to do on the weekend. Okay, have a great one.